ES Audio. Hello, I'm Mark Blunden, and this is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, exploring deep space powered by water. But first, COVID's new Arcturus subvariant has arrived in Britain and is thought to be the most infectious strain yet. The UK Health Security Agency has confirmed its presence but that there are under 100 known cases. A study by the University of Tokyo has also found Arcturus is nearly 1.2 times as transmissible as Kraken, which was until now the most infectious subvariant. But while it's more transmissible, this new subvariant is not thought to be any more severe when caught than Kraken. Next, a London space startup is answering the sector's big problem with rocket fuel pollution by using water as a propellant. So, how does it work? Water is made up of its really powerful constituents. You've got hydrogen and oxygen, and they actually provide the most efficient and powerful time to thrust rocket burn. So, by combining those two and combusting those two, you can get really powerful rockets. That's Ashley Johnson, founder of Applied Atomics, which is backed by the UK Space Agency. Think of their invention a bit like an intergalactic hybrid car using a water splitting technique and an engine inspired by nuclear fusion. You can also have those constituents and propel them electrically. So actually use magnets and ionization to help propel you at really, really high speeds, but very low thrust. So we're able to actually do both. And with test launches scheduled soon in Britain's new space race, the company hopes its patent-pending propulsion techniques will help future human space missions become more self-reliant. It gets you to the, the various planets, but you can also have the added advantage of taking some of the abundance of water some of these planets and asteroids have and actually using that as fuel to propel yourself back. Now... Staying with space, and if there's life on Mars, how mundane is it? A test crew will find out when they live in a windowless fake red planet in a 1,700-square-foot Houston training centre for one year. NASA's made-up Mars base includes four small rooms, two bathrooms and an airlock, leading to the pretend outdoors in a bid to create a facility closely resembling conditions for Martian pioneers. Equipment future Mars astronauts would use is scattered around the red sand-covered floor including a weather station, a brick-making machine and a small greenhouse. But, of course, the Martian problems will be worse with dust devils, high radiation levels, temperature fluctuation and a year that lasts 687 days. Next, a rare spectacle indeed can be enjoyed by visitors to London's magnificent Kew Gardens, the once-in-a-lifetime flowering of the Ethiopian Enset tree. The NSET, which grows up to 10 metres tall, is monocarpic. When the bud began to appear on NSET, it's a couple of feet long. So absolutely enormous and really, really exciting. It will only flower once at the end of its life, and it will produce an enormous inflorescence. And that's what we've got here at Kew. It's over a metre long, and it's probably going to keep getting larger until the plant eventually uses up all its energy and dies. That's research leader Dr James Burrell, who explains why NSET is a unique foodstuff. Unlike its relative, the banana, where you might just eat the fruits, in NSET it's actually the entire trunk, which we call a a pseudo-stem, and the underground corn, which looks a bit like a giant celeriac up to a metre across. And that is the edible part. It's now hoped growing forests of these tasty trees could help offer food security to people in East Africa. Now... A study submitted to the Journal of Cosmology and Astroparticle Physics by researchers has produced a new image, revealing the most detailed map of dark matter distributed across the cosmos. A team that includes researchers from Cambridge University says it confirms Einstein's theory about how massive structures grow and bend light, with a test that spans the entire age of the universe. Using the Atacama Cosmology Telescope in Chile, the team tracked how the gravitational pull of large heavy structures, including dark matter, warps cosmic radiation on its 14 billion year journey towards Earth. Let's go to the ads. Stay there for more news from the world of tech and science. Plus, mouse clicking link to your stress levels. Why not hit follow in the meantime? Welcome back. 
Scientists believe a technique that identifies the buildup of abnormal proteins associated with Parkinson's disease may diagnose the condition long before symptoms start to show. New research published in the Lancet Neurology Journal appears to confirm that the method, called alpha-synuclein seed amplification assay, can accurately identify people who are at risk of developing the condition. Scientists at Northwestern University said successful early symptom detection tests in more than a thousand people by sampling brain and spinal cord fluid could pave the way for faster diagnosis and treatment of Parkinson's. Research shows the importance of pinpointing buildup of these abnormal proteins throughout the brain and the nervous system before physical symptoms such as tremors, slowness of movement or muscle stiffness start to emerge. And finally... A study is linking the way people use their computer mouse as an indicator of how stressed they're feeling. Researchers from Germany's ETH Zurich found that stressed people make sudden exaggerated strokes with the device, relax colleagues, take a shorter, more direct route to reach their destination on screen, and may take more time doing so. 90 participants performed office tasks using tracking software and wearing a heart monitoring device. You're up to date. Come back at 4pm for the Leader Podcast, bringing you the latest news, interviews and analysis from the Evening Standard here in London. We'll be back tomorrow at 1pm. See you then.